Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to the Encouraging Word broadcast. And uh, you didn't get your time wrong. This is actually going on a little early tonight. So uh, we have a little bit to go over tonight on that. And uh, we're going to, before we do that, though, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night and we thank you for how you have blessed all the day through. We thank you for each and every one. We ask that your your blessings of healing would be upon those that need to be healed, deliverance upon those that need to be delivered. Lord, help us to walk in a way that's pleasing to you. And Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you are so good to us. We praise you and we glorify your holy, holy name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So tonight, um, Encouraging Word Broadcast, we're coming from the book of Job. Job chapter 42. So if you could turn to Job chapter 42. Now, if you want to know where that is, and maybe you haven't gone and looked up Job, go to the book of Psalms and, and then back up a little bit, and you'll be right there at Job. All right. Job chapter 42. And uh, I want to take a look at verses 5 and 6 to, to begin. So Job chapter 42 Starting at verses 5 and 6, it says, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. You know, this is an amazing uh, reaction. You know, when we look at this as Job's reaction to, to God, you know, his reaction to God is, and he's saying, you know, I've heard of thee with the hearing of the ear, but now my eye seeth thee. And what what is his Job's, what is the response when a person sees the Lord? Well, Job's response was, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. You see, the absolute holiness of God, you know, when you get close to the Lord, it shows your unholiness your need for God, your need for, for to be clean, you, the, your need for uh, to be clean from your sin, you know. So Job saw himself in the right light. He saw, he abhorred himself. He, you know, he, in comparison to God, we are so vile, so corrupt in, in respect to God. God is holy, holy, holy. The Lord, uh, you know, is, is, righteous altogether and he is you know he is great i mean i have more more reactions to people reacting to the lord and that's what i'll kind of look at tonight a little bit isaiah chapter 6 isaiah 6 now here Isaiah has an encounter with God. Let's look at Isaiah's encounter with God here, verses 1 through 6, or 1 through 5. Um, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim, each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King the Lord of hosts. You see here, Isaiah has this encounter of seeing seeing God. He, he has this vision of seeing the Lord, and he sees the Lord here, and what is Isaiah's reaction? Woe is me. I'm undone. I'm finished. You know, and what does he say? He is a man of unclean lips, and he dwells in the midst of a people of unclean lips. You know, the closer that you get to God, the closer you get to God, you it, it, he shows you your absolute need for the Savior. I mean, you you can't walk around thinking, uh, making some kind of estimation of yourself as being super, 
you know, super holier than thou, because let me just tell you right now that when you draw close to the Lord, every flaw and every blemish in your life will stand out. You see, you need Jesus Christ. He will cleanse you from every sin. He will wash you and make you pure and clean in his sight. But without Christ, your good works, those good things that you rely on and trust in, to, to, to your good reputation or what people say about you and those good deeds that you've done, if you're outside of Christ, none of those can fix the problem. You and I, outside of Christ, are altogether corrupt and broken. And we need the Savior. You know, there's more. Let's go to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Let's read verses 1 through 6. Moses has an encounter here. Now when Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. You see, fear, and you know, that's, and there's even more um, concerning this. I want to read all of these ones concerning Moses here, and then we'll come back to it. But Moses, uh, or Exodus 19 um, is next, and it's, so remember, Moses feared to look at the Lord. Now here, Exodus 19 says in verses 14 through 16, and Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes and he said unto the people be ready against the third day come not at your wives and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of a trumpet exceeding loud so that all the so that all the people that was in the camp trembled you see they they were they were terrified and you know and what was the level of this well hebrews is where we're going to look real quick. We're going to go over to Hebrews chapter uh, 12 because Hebrews chapter 12 gets, gives us even more insight into this. Hebrews chapter 12, take a look at verses, uh, starting verse 18. And we'll read down to 29. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the sound and the voice of words, which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched a mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Listen, the people were so terrified at the voice of God at Mount Sinai that they told Moses, don't let God speak to us anymore. We're going to die. They were that fearful. And Moses himself exceedingly feared and quaked. God, you know, it, yet God dealt with Moses, you know, in, in Moses saw a similitude of God, you know. But I'm telling you, look at look at Moses reaction to the Lord fear and quaking, you know, and it says, but you are come unto the Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of, a new co of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall we not 
uh, shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that the, those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. You see, he's telling us that, he, you know, we look at Job and we look at Moses, you know, their reaction, Isaiah's reaction to, to God. And God is telling us that it's even more so now with Christ. It's even more so in this relationship that you have with him. And now we need to, we need to serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. And God is a consuming fire. You know, we, we look at that and say, oh, well, you know, um, I'm not really sure. Well, let's take a look at John chapter 18. John chapter 18, when they came to arrest Jesus, remember when they came to arrest Jesus in, in the garden? Let's read that. John chapter 18, verses 1 through 9. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden into which he entered, and his disciples and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes retorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as he said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then he asked them again, saying, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. Now, I want to point something out here, so just in case you didn't know. In the King James Version of the Bible when they italicize a word, it means wasn't in the original text. They just give it for clarity so you can understand, you know, with punctuation and everything, there's clarity. But they abbreviate that word. I want you to pay close attention that when you go back and look at this, what Jesus said to them, um, it says in verse 5, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. Notice that the he is italicized. So in the original text, Jesus just answered them. They said they're seeking Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus says unto them, I am. What, who just said that? God. This is, you know, God says, I am. That, that's the name that God identifies himself to Moses as. I am. What was the reaction? They fell backward to the ground. These were men that were coming to arrest Jesus. His word, who he is. Look at, the, look at the power in Christ. He is a consuming fire. Look at what John says in Revelation chapter 1. You know, um, Revelation chapter 1. This is Apostle John. John who'd been with Jesus, laid his head on Jesus' uh, chest at the Last Supper. This John praying now on the Isle of Patmos where he was exiled to. Chapter 1 verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Remember, there was a trumpet on Mount Sinai too, right? The voice like a, like a great trumpet in that voice. The people feared to even hear it because they thought they were going to die. Moses feared, ex exceedingly feared and quaked, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and unto Smyrna and unto Pergamos and unto Thyatira and unto Sardis and unto Philadelphia and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and I, being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were aflame as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, 
as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. I want you to understand the reaction to God. Human reaction to God is one of being absolutely overwhelmed with the holiness of the Lord, the fear of God. You see, today there's so many ungodly men and women walking and living their lives absolutely in rebellion and wickedness, thinking that they can, they can act any way, they can do anything that they want to do, they can say anything they want to say, they can behave any way they want to behave, and there's no accountability, but let me let you know this, that we are accountable to God, and we will stand before this God, from whose face the heavens and the earth flee away. And you will not stand in pride and arrogance on that day. No. The Bible says every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So today, don't harden your heart against God. Don't be like so many in the past that have hardened their hearts in, in, in complete rebellion against God only at the last moments of their lives to realize what that rebellion has cost them. Terrible testimonies of people that have railed against God and refused to repent, only to regret this. And there's hell is full of people today that have lived their lives in rebellion against God with no thought of a consequence for their actions. And hell is a one-way ticket once you go there, you don't get out. It's not like you get an early parole or, you know, somebody can pray you out. Heck, doesn't work like that. If you leave this earth without Jesus Christ as your Savior, then that is where you spend eternity. You should take a look at the reaction of these people who had an encounter with God and realize that God is God. And it is right to fear Him in godly fear. It is right to reverence him. It is right to obey him and it is right to follow him. So I encourage you today, if you don't know Jesus Christ, repent of your sins and trust Christ. We can't approach God with our sinful, wicked, you know, our righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. He wants to give you the righteousness of Christ. You can have that in Jesus. You can be forgiven completely of every sin and washed clean in the blood of the Lamb. God bless you. This is Encouraging Word Broadcast. I'll see you tomorrow night. Bible study, 6 o'clock. The Lord bless you and keep you. Have an amazing evening with Jesus. God bless.